There seems to be a lot of confusion about iCloud photo library and storage space on your iPhone. In particular, if you have an iPhone with uh, 16 gigabytes or maybe 32 gigabytes, then chances are you run out of space quickly. And so one of the culprits of our photos and videos that you have taken and stored on your phone. So it's only natural to wanting to remove those photos and videos that you don't need anymore so to free up space on your phone. However, there are a couple of things that you should understand before you do that. Apple has made it much easier to manage storage or to let the phone and iOS handle storage so you don't have to worry about it. But it really depends on the settings that you're using and also not only the space and the storage space on your phone but also the storage space you have in iCloud and I think up until this day Apple still offers only five gigabytes of free storage when you sign up for an Apple ID and so I want to uh, just summarize some of the points that I've written about in my blog article that I would highly recommend you to read. Uh, I'm linking it below so check that out. That really has all the details about iPhone storage photos, iCloud photo library, how the whole synchronization etc works and tips on why you should likely not delete photos to free up space. There are only a couple and special occasions and use cases where that makes sense. In every other case it, it most likely doesn't. So I want to just summarize that and invite you to read the blog article if you want to have more information. Basically the way it works is if you set up a phone, a new phone from scratch, chances are you enable automatically through the setup wizard what's called the iCloud photo library. It's as the name implies a photo library that's stored in iCloud and if you have multiple Apple devices that are signed into the same iCloud account and that have the iCloud photo library enabled then the advantage of using that library is that all of your photos are kept in sync. So in other words, if you snap a photo with your iPhone, it automatically also appears then um, not only on iCloud.com, if you log in via the browser and go to the Photos app, you'll see it there, but it also gets synchronized to all of your other devices. Now, in the past, before Apple had iCloud Photo Library, they had the iCloud Photo Stream, which was somewhat similar and that's where I think some of the confusion comes in but it worked entirely differently. The way a photo stream worked, if you snapped a photo it would send a copy basically to iCloud and then all of your other devices would see that photo as part of that photo stream. However, if you then remove that photo from your iPhone, from your camera roll, it would not synchronize that deletion from to all the other devices. So in other words, it, would st it could still be in photo stream and if you downloaded that photo to an iPad maybe, that's logged into the same Apple ID, then both your iPhone and your iPad would have different copies of that same photo. And obviously Apple realized that it much better if you make changes to a photo on, on one device that those changes are replicated and synchronized to all of your other devices and that's awesome. I mean I've been using that for for years now. If I take a photo on my phone and if I make changes maybe I adjust it, I you know add filters whatever, instantaneously all those changes would get replicated so I would have the very same edited photo on my iMac, on my MacBook Pro, on my iPad etc. If I delete one photo automatically that photo is removed from iCloud and from all the, the connected devices. So that's one of the reasons why if you use iCloud Photo Library, you don't want to remove photos from one device to, to reclaim some storage because that means the deleted photos and videos are going to be removed from all the other connected devices as well. So that's not a good thing. But obviously, since space uh, is limited, especially on iPhones, Apple has introduced a capability they call optimized storage and what that basically means is that if you run out of space or long before you run out of space, iOS in the case of an iPhone or an iPad automatically removes the full resolution images from the device. They are still stored in iCloud so you always have the full resolution images but they only keep thumbnails or low resolution 
copies basically on your device. And if you open a photo on iPhone, for instance, and the full resolution photo is not available, iOS automatically downloads it for you. So that sometimes takes a few seconds, depending on your network connection. But that way, the photos don't consume all of the storage space. So with iCloud Photo Library, there isn't really a need to remove photos or videos because Apple and iCloud do that automatically. iOS manages its own storage by removing photos and videos and only leaving thumbnails behind. So if you scroll through your, your photo timeline, you're not gonna notice a difference most likely. You think all of your photos are there, but when you click on one and it starts downloading, that's an indication that that photo wasn't actually on your device and did not consume any significant space. And so that's why you don't need to start deleting photos. Now, one thing obviously is if you don't have enough iCloud storage, then you have an issue because iOS cannot upload photos to iCloud and remove it from the local device if you have no space in iCloud. And so you're gonna likely hit a limit or the limit really quickly if you only have five gigabytes worth of iCloud storage. So that's one of the reasons why you might wanna remove photos from not only from the device but from iCloud in general to free up space in iCloud and consequently also on the phone. And so what you need to do to make this work is basically you need to export those photos from iCloud and you can do that. The best way to do it is really on a Mac. If you have a Mac with plenty of storage and your photos app on the Mac is set to download full resolution images, so you always have the full res versions on your Mac locally on your local hard drive, then you can simply export them from there, remove them from the Photos app then, and that removes them from iCloud and from all the connected devices. So that's certainly one way of doing it. But if you do that, then you know you have the manual labor of making those exports regularly and then removing them, and you lose one layer of backup because if your Mac ever crashes or if your external hard drive ever crashes where you might have uh, kept a backup, then your photos are gone. So that's why I always recommend leaving them with Apple, paying a few dollars per month uh, for more storage. I think for $2.99 you get now 50 gigs or even 100 gigs or even 200 gigs. I don't know, they've, they've dropped the, the prices. They were a little bit uh, expensive in the past, uh, but I have now two terabytes with Apple and I think I pay maybe $9.99 a month and I know that I have all my documents and all my photos and videos in iCloud so if I manage to lose my own backups at least I still have them uh, with Apple so that's what I would recommend if that's not an option for you for whatever reason again if you have enough iCloud space then you do not have to delete photos from from your phone there is no need iOS manages its own storage now there are a couple of examples where pictures and videos can still use up space. And that's for instance, if you use applications like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, you know, any of those messaging apps basically where you can send and receive photos and videos, those are stored separately from your iCloud photo library and they might very well, you know, start accumulating space and then you might end up with gigabytes of, of data, of attachment data basically from those applications and you think it's photos, but it's in reality, those apps and I can show you um, I'm gonna link it down there in the in the description then where you can go into the settings and you can see exactly what application is using how much space on your phone you can also see how much space is taken by photos and then per application and that way you can identify uh, what app is the culprit and it might not be photos it shouldn't be photos if you're using iCloud photo library and so that's one of the key points I, I want to share and again, if, if you don't have enough iCloud storage, then you need to remove photos from iCloud. And the uh, best way of doing it, as I've mentioned, is to, to use a Mac, really. That's the most reliable way, because if you plug in your phone to a PC and you try it, you know, all those photos that have not been downloaded from iCloud, you cannot easily transfer because they are not on the device. So that's not a very reliable and good way of exporting your photos. That only works if you do not use iCloud Photo Library where you have all the pictures locally on your device, then you can export them from your phone, even to a PC. 
but otherwise the Mac solution is definitely the most reliable one. Alternatively, you can also go to iCloud.com and download it, them from there. You can, I think, select multiple photos, but if you have hundreds or thousands of photos, that's not very reliable either. So it's the, the Mac version is, uh, the Mac route is definitely the most reliable way. But again, if, if you can get some extra iCloud uh, storage, wait for those photos to be uploaded. And, and then you don't have to worry about storage space on your phone. Also, if you remove photos from iCloud photo library, they are not truly removed. They're only moved to a recently deleted folder or album. And I'm not sure if that counts towards your storage, it might. So even if you remove something, it's, it's not a really a removal, it's just a moving. And if you're out of space, then that moving might not work because you don't have space to, you know, make the copy and then remove it from there. So that's also an issue that I've seen with some users. But the good news is in that recently deleted uh, album, you can restore images that you accidentally deleted. So it's definitely a good thing. But just be aware that if you really want to free up space, and you decide to delete photos and they get moved to the recently deleted album, then empty that album because otherwise they still might use up uh, the storage space that you tried to free. That was a quick overview of how I recommend you manage your iCloud photos. If you liked the video, give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see uh, more videos like that and you get notified uh, if you enable the alerting in YouTube. If you thought that, use, that video was not super useful, this button seems to be working as well. Uh, check out my blog, I'm linking it down below and uh, thanks for watching. See you around.